Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome back to Science Faith Connection, a segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to be discussing the scientific evidence for the plagues of the Exodus. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you. So, I mean, you know, you look at Exodus, and it, and it just seems kind of incredible. I mean, you've got gnats, and you've got the Nile turning to blood, and all sorts of things. Um, a lot of people look at that and say, well, this is just a story. It's not really what happened. Is there evidence that the, the, exit, or the plagues of, of the Exodus actually happened? There's no historical record, but we wouldn't expect there to be a historical record because the Egyptians had the common practice of only recording their victories and their successes. So this is in the category of a failure, a disaster. So they're not going to record it. So in terms of the Egyptians recording it, we wouldn't expect to see that. We wouldn't expect the Egyptians to record it, correct. Is there anything of, you know, like geological, archaeological history that you would expect to find a record of what's going on? Or, I mean, would you expect to be able to look and find, oh, here's the evidence that this happened in some sort of physical way? Well, notice that most of the plagues are biological in nature. So, yeah, you're not going to find any evidence, uh, you know, 3,500 years after the fact. So if that's the case, why would we have any reason to think this actually happened? Well, something had to explain the collapse of the Egyptian empire. I mean, getting three and a half million people uh, leaving the country, uh, heading to the land of Canaan. And notice in the book of Exodus, it says many Egyptians joined them. Moreover, we see the Egyptians pouring their wealth uh, upon these Israelites and the Egyptians that were going with them. And so the nation got impoverished. Uh, these disasters would have, would have had a major economic effect on it. And so you have this vast empire that went down to southern Sudan and Kenya and spilled over into Mesopotamia. And overnight, it's a shadow of its former self. Something had to happen to explain that dramatic collapse. Well, that's kind of interesting because, you know, when you look at the biblical account, it's talking about what God is doing in preparation for his people and leading them out. But it really doesn't say much about the nation of Israel or, the, excuse me, the nation of Egypt afterwards. So you're arguing that this is a good explanation for we've got this record of Egypt being a very powerful nation and then just kind of in a relatively quick, in, quick moment of time becomes a, a, a non-world power at all. True, and look at the people resources they're losing, because the people that went with the Israelites are those that say, hey, God's with them, it's not with our Pharaoh, we're going with them. And I imagine it was some of the better educated and more talented Egyptians that joined the Israelites and said, we're going with you to the land of Canaan. So, so let's take a step back. Uh, you know, I know there's, there's at least one article on our website by uh, Hugh Henry and Dan Dyke who uh, offer a plausible explanation. And you know, they make very clear that this isn't like, oh, this, we're explaining the plagues of the Exodus. Um, but, you know, but they offer an explanation that you know, for, the, for the first plague where it's the, the river Nile that is turning red, that there's a red toxic algae bloom, which leads mm -hmm. to a bunch of frogs being uh, or, you know, a frog explosion, which as the frogs are decaying, you get gnats. Uh, you know, it's kind of this chain of events where it, it makes a plausible, hey, we could actually explain this. What do you think of explanations like that? Good, bad, or, or something else? Well, I think they're good, but they're still supernatural because look at the timing. Is a sequence, and you know, I looked at the one about the plague of darkness that encompassed the land. Mm -hmm. Well, growing up in coastal British Columbia, I remember some times where it was virtually black uh, during the middle of the day, but you don't get weather systems like that in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So something, you know, God had to step in and bring about this never before seen meteorological event into a desert region. And so it's like, hey, this is supernatural control of meteorology. It's not just a natural occurrence by chance. So, so that's an interesting point because if I get what you're saying, there may be things that we would label as miraculous that we can actually find a physical explanation for. Does, I mean, many would say, and I, you, know, I, you know my position on this, but many would say, well, if you found a natural explanation, then therefore God's not involved or it's not miraculous. How would you, how would you respond to well, that? Well, I think one of the most uh, best responses is, you know, where the Red Sea is parted, and there's been a number of explanations about how you can get wind phenomena in a desert region like that, where that will happen. But notice, we got the Israelites and their Egyptian compatriots going across the Red Sea on dry land. The Egyptian army follows them, and what happens to the Egyptian army? So it's the perfect timing. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
The Israelites and their Egyptian compatriots walked across safely without any mud issues. As soon as the Egyptian army came in, uh, everything collapsed and they were wiped out. So uh, someone's controlling a clock. Yeah, that, that just is a different perspective on it, that the, the miraculous is not in whether we can explain it or not, but it's in you know, almost like God setting it up. You know, I, you know the, the, one of the comments that Dan Dyke and Hugh Henry make in their, their article, it's like, you know, where the, the, or the Nile turns red, that's like, okay, there's something, you know, God's preparing Moses saying that's going to happen. He knows this other thing's going to happen. God tells him, hey, this is what's going to happen. It, it's not that it's unexplainable. It's that God knows the timing and it's beyond what the Egyptians and, well, and, moreover, and their... Well, moreover, you've got mm -hmm. Moses predicting it ahead of time. Exactly, yes. And, so, and it catches the Egyptians by surprise. It's not like, oh, well, yeah, we can see this red tide developing already. Uh, they're caught by surprise at every single uh, one of those 10 plagues. And notice those 10 plagues happen relatively soon after one another. Mm -hmm. So it'd be one thing to say, well, maybe we can explain uh, this plague of gnats, but the fact that it's quickly followed up by all these other plagues, all with perfect timing, right after Moses says, this is going to happen. So uh, is it, would it be a reasonable explanation to say these are just kind of natural occurrences that God's orchestrated, obviously. He knows the weather patterns. He knows all of that's going to happen. But it's just kind of a sequence of events that's going to play out. Or do we, is there something more to that where God is directly intervening to make things happen? Well, the analogy, I call these things transformational miracles mm -hmm. in the sense that laws of physics aren't being violated, but it'd be like, okay, a tornado goes through a junkyard and you get an airplane out of it that you can fly as opposed to you and a bunch of your engineering and scientist friends going to different uh, you know, manufacturing companies, buying the parts and pulling it all together. Somebody with a lot of intellect and knowledge and control over all these things. It wasn't just you going to a mine and getting iron ore. You actually got the stuff that was prefabricated and ready to go to put together. So as a manufacturer here, Without an intelligent, mindful manufacturer, you're not going to get those events. So, so even if we can explain maybe what caused the events or in retrospect say, ah, these are the natural phenomena behind it, the fact that they're orchestrated in the thing and that they accomplish a purpose of what they're going. Because it does seem like, you know, I, I don't know whether it's just tens a random number or whatever, but these plagues seem to have a function more than just, oh, here's a bunch of devastating stuff. Uh, what, what would well, you say is going on with the plagues? when you get to the later plagues, because when I mean, you get to that last one, the firstborn of every one of your families and of your animals. And so the secondborn, the thirdborn, the fourthborn, they're all fine. Mm -hmm. It's the firstborn. So how do you explain where you're only getting the firstborn knocked out and nobody else, everybody else is healthy? And the fact that the firstborn of the Israelites and their Egyptian compatriots, again, they're fine. So it's the selectivity that tells me this is a miracle. So one last question. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that there's a lot of Egyptians that seem to be following the Israelites as this happens. Is that just simply because we're going to pick the winner and go with it? Or is there something about the, the way the plagues comes out that seems to be influencing that? Well, notice at the beginning uh, we uh, have, you know, Moses doing his thing. And the Egyptian magicians say, well, we can do that too. Uh, you know, the whole thing about the, the staffs and the snakes. And, uh, but then as we move into the plagues, they say, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so this is telling the Egyptians, it's their God. Our gods are not able to do this. Their God can do this. And God is with them. I want to be with them. And they got righteous laws. I want to be with them. And they could see the insanity of Pharaoh's response and saying, I don't think I want that uh, man as a leader. I'm going to go with Moses. Well, thanks, Hugh. I really sure. appreciate your comments. You know, when we look at the plagues of the Exodus, it kind of seems almost brutal in some sense. But yet, when we examine it a little more closely, what we see is that God is using the miracles of the plagues of Exodus to witness actually not only to the Israelites, but also to the Egyptians and to bring people into his kingdom. Very similar to Jesus uh, authority as God being authenticated by his miracles. You know, I would encourage you to check down in the show notes. There's some articles that you can go to investigate more. What might be some of the plausible explanations for the plagues? What's going on to help you be more equipped to answer the, the challenges that people raise against why would God use all the plagues and what's he doing so that you can be equipped to share the gospel?